Good morning folks, 21st Century Caveman here. Hope everybody's well, hope everybody's happy. Welcome to another episode in the series, How to Make a Man Cave, She Shed, Workshop, Cabin in the Woods, whatever label you put on it, the process is exactly the same. So today we're cutting down some OSB boards in order that we can sheath the uh, timber framework. Now OSB boards, um, OSB stands for Orientated Strand Board. These are used very commonly in the construction industry. They're very, very strong indeed. They're structural grade and they're ideal for sheathing uh, buildings such as this. So I've measured up and I'm cutting these to size and you'll see that I'm actually fixing a, I suppose you'd call it a ledger for want of a better word, in order that I can actually support the boards whilst I'm actually uh, fitting them into place. Now these boards are quite heavy and um, it's really going to be very difficult indeed if you're on your own to fix these into place even if you've got clamps you really do need something to perch these on while you're doing what you need to do. And as you can see this timber ledger it's doing the job wonderfully. Now it's also worthwhile having some clamps as far as I'm concerned, these are absolutely invaluable and every clamp you have is really literally like having an extra pair of hands to help you. So what I'm going to do then, as you can see now, I'm just measuring where all of the timbers are, in other words, where all of the upright timbers are and the studs because I'm going to be fixing um, some decking screws every six or seven inches along the um, periphery of this board and also on every wooden stud. So I'm just tacking it in place initially and then I'm going to go back and fill the gaps and get the spacing on the screws. Now obviously, you know, watching somebody screw in hundreds of screws isn't the most um, interesting video. So I'm just going to um, skip um, from one shot to another um, so you get the gist of what I'm doing here. So as I say, I'm actually securing these OSB boards to the framework using decking screws and they're 65 millimeters long and they're absolutely perfect for an application like this. So once again, as you can see, I've got the impact driver out and it's absolutely perfect for a job like this. As you can see, these boards are very big. Um, they're eight per fours, uh, which is the equivalent of 2,440 millimeters times 1,220 millimeters in metric. So as you can see, they are big, they are unwieldy, they are heavy. Um, so if this is a job you can do with, the, you know, with somebody's help, I'd certainly recommend it. It obviously takes a lot longer if you're on your own like I am 
But the fact is, you know, when you work full time and time is of the essence, you have to do what you can when you can. Now, um, these videos were shot in August, um, sorry, in October, I do apologize, um, in the UK. Um, so the weather's all over the place, basically. One day there might be a nice summer day, the next day it might be absolutely chucking it down with rain. So you have got to take every opportunity when it presents itself. Now, with this OSB board and um, in common with lots of sort of timber um, sheet cladding, um, I think it's important to put spaces between the boards to allow for expansion and contraction depending on the weather. So I've just got some little plastic wedges here, look, which are used for, um, for spacing and packing out flooring, laminate flooring, for example, which you use internally, but they're brilliant for getting a decent spacing on boards like this. So I've actually clamped the board into place. Now the thing is you could actually measure the timber framework but I think the reality is that no matter how careful you are trying to get things cut perfectly is going to be very difficult. So I think it makes much more sense to attach the boards to the framework and then basically just to get a pencil or a felt tip or whatever, just draw around the framework and then cut along the lines. You're going to be guaranteed to get a much better fit that way. So as you can see, the boards have now been cut down and I'm just securing it into place. Now I won't be videoing the installation of every single board. I'll just do um, some video footage here of two or three boards and uh, you know you can use your imagination as to um, the rest of them. And this is a good example look, of actually just measuring up against the timber work and then cutting it. If you try to sort of measure this and then cut the angles, unless you're something of a joinery expert, then you know, you're not gonna get the sort of fit you're looking for. It's much quicker, more efficient, and more accurate to do it this way. So these OSB boards then, so as I've already said, it stands for orientated strand board. Now these are stronger than plywood when used in a particular way. Uh, during the manufacturing process, they're made by placing strands of uh, fiber wood 
in particular directions. So this is done strategically, you know, these aren't just placed randomly and that gives it its inherent strength. So all of these different fibers are bonded together using a cocktail of resins, which give these boards their water resistant properties. So they are inherently water resistant and are perfect for using either indoors or outdoors. But if they're gonna be exposed to the weather for any period of time, you do need to treat them um, accordingly. And the bits of the board which are most at risk are the edges, especially where you've cut them, as I have done in this situation here, look. So um, you may be wondering why I haven't finished off the, um, the, the roof, the rafters, and the reason is because we're expecting the tail end of a hurricane, allegedly, and I just wanna make sure that all of the sides are up so I can chuck a tarp over the top to make this structure waterproof at the earliest opportunity because I don't know what time I'm gonna to have to complete the roof. So once again, you do need to leave a tiny gap between the boards. Um, it needs to be two or three mils, something like that, to allow for expansion and contraction. You know, it doesn't need to be wide enough to drive a bus through it.
Right folks, so we're on another day now as you can see and the sun's shining but as I've already mentioned we've got some really bad weather on its way. It's the tail end of a hurricane or something or other. Now because I wasn't sure when I was actually going to be in a position to finish off the roof um, I, decided, I decided to treat these boards as a bit of an insurance policy really. As I've already mentioned they are inherently water resistant due to the way they're made. But, you know, why take any chances um, with something like this when I've invested so much time and effort thus far? So what I'm using here then is a, um, a waterproofing agent called Clear Coat. Bought it from Wix, got a nice big tub of the stuff. This is an oily type sort of waterproofing agent. And when the rain hits it, it literally just rolls off it. It's very good indeed. And it's also very, very good value for money. And I did actually put two coats of this stuff on, by the way. Now, when you're using this stuff, you really do need to make sure that you're wearing some old clothing, you know, and it doesn't matter if you get it trash because believe you and me, I mean, I'm actually really taking my time applying this stuff. Look, I'm not slopping it absolutely everywhere because this is hazardous to the environment um, until it dries. So I'm just being as careful as we can. And also given the fact that we do actually have pets, we have three cats. So I'm just trying to be as careful as I can with them. So here we go then. So once I put a, a tarp over the top there, this um, structure will be completely waterproof and I don't need to worry about the weather. Thank you for watching.